Hello, welcome to Going Deeper. I'm sitting with Rich Michelson, and uh, we're continuing our conversations uh, with the local uh, literary and otherwise award recipients for the Sammy Awards for 2019. So, um, welcome. Well, thank you. Glad to have you here. Pleasure. Yeah, so I was looking at your work. It's nice to have the table full of your children's books. 19. Yeah, every table should be full of exactly. my children's books. All right. It's 19 total. Is that uh, a number I, we're yeah, still at? Yeah, I really don't. I don't. Yeah, that's really what keep I track. got. And all your other adult poetry, mm -hmm. your beautiful gallery, uh, and all the ways that you have, you know, contributed to art and literature and children's literature. So my first question I want to get to is, um, what is it, what was it, what are some of the themes of your childhood that uh, kind of informed and influenced this work that you do today? Well, it's funny, you know, probably most people know me for my Jewish-themed children's books. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, uh, I grew up with no religious education of any kind. Mm. Uh, I did not go to Hebrew school or day school. I was not bar mitzvahed. Uh, in fact, uh, my mother was very uh, anti-religious, uh, mm -hmm. um, an atheist to the extreme. Yeah. Uh, my dad was working all the time and had no interest. Uh, so I grew up um, in a household with none of the trappings of Judaism uh, whatsoever. We didn't celebrate the holidays. Mm. Uh, and uh, I kind of joke is the first uh, synagogue I ever stepped in was when I started getting invited to speak in synagogues. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my wife, uh, uh, on her own uh, behest decided to convert to Judaism mm -hmm. uh, after we were married and you'll have to bring her in for that interview. Sure. Uh, it was not my idea and I was yeah. uh, actually against it uh, but um, it was really during her conversion um, which uh, she was part of a class of two the other being our mutual mm -hmm. friend Julius Lester right, right. Uh, and really uh, when I went into the uh, JCA, the Jewish mm. Community of Amherst, mm -hmm. uh, the first person I saw was Julius, right. uh, who I knew really uh, from his first book, Look Out Whitey, Black Power Gonna Get Your Mama, yeah. uh, as a uh, black militant. Um, and uh, I was surprised to see him there. Uh, we developed a friendship, mm -hmm. and it was really through that friendship and also my wife's uh, questions. Mm -hmm. uh, she would ask me things as she was studying, like, well, why does this happen? And I would say, how do I know? Uh, but I started reading along with her, mm -hmm. and I realized how little of my own background I knew. You know, I, I knew uh, I was interested in history. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew the kings and queens of England, I knew Russian history, mm -hmm. but I had no idea where my own family had come from, where my grandparents really? were from, um, you know, the, uh, in a sense, the lineage that brought me to who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a writer, and so in order to figure things out, I started writing mm -hmm. about uh, my past. Uh, I'm trying to give myself a relationship with my grandparents that I didn't really have. Yeah. Uh, and the more I studied, um, you know, I was writing things down, and uh, some of them, not all, but uh, I, my first children's books are all children's poetry. Mm -hmm. I consider myself a poet first. Sure. Um, but a lot of my work was related to that. Yeah. Um, probably my best known books actually um, would be as, my, as good as anybody about Martin Luther King and mm. Abraham Joshua Heschel. Right, that's this um, one right here. You have that. And um, that, uh, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood that when I was born was probably was 90% Jewish. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time 
I left, it was 95% African American. Mm -hmm. um, we were really the last of the white families to leave the area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not for any social reason, more for economic reasons. Sure, sure. And uh, so the other things that a lot of my books and my poetry and my children's books have to do with race and social justice yeah, issues. Yeah, that actually was my second question. So, so before we get into that, I'm curious, was your mom's aversion, and it, like, it seems like more of an aversion than just neutral secular Yes. Uh, when when that, I started speaking in synagogues, she said, where did I go wrong? I was going to ask, was she alive <laughs> that she, you know, had to respond to your... Yeah. I mean, my mom passed away last year. Oh, yeah. uh, we were very Sorry. close. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think she was certainly proud of me mm. and she liked seeing the books out there, but she uh, had no... So um, was it her, her parents sorry. who immigrated from somewhere? Yes. Okay. Yeah, her, her parents came from uh, Poland. Austria, and were Poland, they Russia. religious? Uh, they were very religious. Okay, so and she so was kind she of responding. she rebelled against yeah. that, uh, against a uh, orthodox upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, she was very adamant uh, in her non-beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you so know, interesting. I, so I have to say that even though I'm steeped now in the Jewish culture, I still share most of her beliefs. Yeah, but it's so interesting that somehow... Jennifer, your wife, was able to do some healing, you know, inadvertently with you and for your mom to the extent that it helped her get right. more, less detached from her past. And I think both my children actually relate very, uh, you know, strongly. Yeah. My daughter's a composer mm -hmm. and uh, her, you know, she's doing very well. We're very proud. Um, and uh, she's had a number of pieces off Broadway. Mm -hmm. One, Tomorrow of the River, was probably, uh, had a long run and mm -hmm was based on the biblical story of Tamar. Hmm. Her most recent work is called Song of Song of Songs. Hmm. Uh, so um, my wife actually went into labor while in the mikvah. Uh -huh. uh, for your non-Jewish uh, viewers, uh, that's the purification mm -hmm. bath you go into uh, when you decide to convert. Mm -hmm. So um, our daughter was Jewish by about 20 minutes. Wow, that's yeah. so interesting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, the segue about Julius is, is important because I see in your books, your children's books, there's a, a, a theme about Jews and blacks and how mm -hmm. do the relationships between Jews and blacks. So are, are some of these autobiographical? It's, it sounds well, like they uh, are. Well, Across the Alley is probably my most autobiographical book. That's your, it's That's in your it. hand Yeah, this here. is the one I was looking for. Um, and that's yeah. about a Jewish boy and a black boy who uh, aren't allowed to play with each other yeah. um, during the time of segregation. So did you but have a friend? Yes, uh -huh. but their bedroom windows face each other hmm. and they become best friends at night. Of course, you know, I'm a writer. Uh, yeah. I'm not a biographer. Uh, all the stories have bits of truth sure. and uh, bits of fancy. Yeah. Uh, Julius actually um, recorded my book as good as anybody wow. uh, and, um, wow. uh, and he was able to, to do all the voices, the uh -huh. African-American voices, the Jewish voices. Um, he, was, he was the, you know, had a beautiful voice. Yes, we listen to his song every time we open, open the show. That's right. And mm -hmm. he was uh, the cantor at both um, my daughter's bat mitzvah, my son's bar mitzvah. Nice. Uh, we had a, a black cantor and a woman rabbi. Right. And right. Um, most of our audience had never been uh, in a temple, and they just figured that's the way it is. Right. Nobody thought that was unusual. I have a great story about the JCA that way, that uh, there was a child who leaned over, and, you know, this was years ago before when Rabbi Sheila was there, mm -hmm. and uh, then some man was on the, on the bima, and the kid says, they let men up there? <laughs> you know, like that was such an anomaly to have a male person, which is very sort of ironic given the history. Well, well I started out as a poet, and in fact, yeah. Julius was very central to um, my writing for children, uh, as were a number of other factors. My gallery, of course, represents a lot of wonderful children's book illustrators. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, my dad... Um, my dad was a victim of gun violence. I do write about that in my adult work, not yeah. in my children's work. Sure. Um, and it was racial. 
And um, I had written an essay uh, about that. Uh, I forget for what magazine at the time. Uh, but Julius uh, sent me an email afterwards mm -hmm. and said um, it was a wonderful essay. It was very moving to him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he thought I had a lot to offer as mm -hmm. far as healing and bringing people together. He said, you know, wow. you can either get bitter or you can try to heal. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, and he thought that uh, I should try my hand at writing for children. Mm. Uh, so he was, he was central in, uh, yeah. in my life in, in that way. Yeah. I should say I'd already written a couple of books of poetry for children, but right, I hadn't right, right. really started writing um, what probably more people are familiar with are the books on race and social justice. Yeah, wow. That's really very moving about your father and that, that whole, you know, the whole thing with Julius and Jennifer and you and your mom. It's, it's a really beautiful well, you kind know, of... And let me just say, uh, you know, again, uh, since it's not something I often talk about, yeah. but um, the, 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 the gun, can, we, we, need to, we need to get a handle on that. Of I mean, course, it's, yeah. for me, it's been many, many years. Uh, I see it every day affecting mm. other families, yeah. and we really, you know, it's time. It's oh, time gosh, that we came together and yeah. made a difference um, And it's in the so world. interesting now that we're talking about that, but in New Zealand, this 33-year-old, 38-year-old, oh. I think she was, uh, mayor, or what, what, no, prime right, minister, prime minister, prime minister yeah. is in six days, she's changed the, you know, they've really acted on it. It is possible. It's a possible. You need the will. People need to come together. In this country, it's a shame because uh, most people lobbyists. are of the same opinion. No, I think the, uh, the lobbyists have a lot to do with mm -hmm. it, the money behind it. Um, well, yeah, that, that, that's a very important story. I'm glad you shared that. Why don't we talk a little bit about your adult poetry? Okay, always happy to. <laughs> uh, that's how what I are started. some of the that's, themes? Um, well, the themes are really not that much different. different. Uh -huh. uh, you know, my poetry tends to be narrative based. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to deal with um, current events, uh, racial yeah. problems, um, you know, uh, some Judaism uh, and the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, it's it's not um, it's not a big stretch for me between writing for children and writing sure. for adults. I think a big difference is that when I write for children, I I really know ahead of time um, what I'm what the book's going to look like, mm -hmm. what I want to say, mm -hmm. and um, when I write. Uh, for adults or really for myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a different process. I'm never quite sure where the work's going to take me. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's more, much more of a discovery for mm. me. Yeah. Uh, where with the children's books, um, you know, I'm interested in language. I'm interested in making it, um, you know, with all this talk, I want to say that um, the books are often funny. Yes. They're fun. I don't sure. want it to look, you know, uh, over heavy, there's, there's right. nothing right. worse than writing a children's book with a message. Uh -huh. uh, it uh -huh. has to be a story or, or kids are not going to be interested, they're not going to want it. It's got to have yeah. some humor, it's got to mm -hmm. have um, some movement and excitement. Uh, that's, there's, if you're writing with a lesson, mm -hmm. you're not going to uh, write a book that kids yeah. are going to be interested in. Uh, but still, sure. um, you know, it's not as free-flowing for me as the poetry mm -hmm. is. So you talked about uh, poetry that has sort of current event kind of meaning. Did you bring any poetry that you'd like to share? Um, well, I, I did bring a, a poem. Uh, most of my poetry is, uh, my poems are longer. Mm. Um, I think my next book is, is uh, very heavily uh, based as many artists are dealing with these last few years. Uh, current events, I think, is uh, something that 
um, I prefer it the other way, but is blossoming in the poetry world, sure. in the theater world, <laughs> in movies. Uh, we're all trying to take back some semblance of sanity mm -hmm. uh, in poetry. We're trying to uh, take back the language mm. so that it means what it says, not uh, hmm. this George Orwellian uh, right. lingo that uh, is in the government now. Uh, and um, mm -hmm. my, my good friend, the poet Martina Spada, uh, has an anthology coming out in the spring, mm -hmm. um, poems that are, uh, have to do with uh, Trump's world and election mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and uh, what poets can do to try to change the tide, mm. um, and, uh, and I'm happy to have work in it. Uh, but, but I brought, um, which I hadn't meant to be talking about my dad, but since it came up in the conversation, oh, uh, I'll read a poem um, that is in my book, More Money Than God. Uh -huh. uh, I have it, you'll notice, printed out in 18-point type because I can no longer read my own books. Right, I've, right, I've arrived right. at that age. <laughs> um, but this is uh, a book that, uh, a poem that I think um, touches on a little bit what we spoke about, um, the neighborhood I grew up in, mm -hmm. which was uh, very poor, and uh, my love of art, mm. which developed uh, somehow from that. This is called More Money Than God. More money than God, my father said, again and again, shaking his head in disbelief at any ostentation. The neighbor's gold-plated knocker, we still banged fists. Or my own lust to own the autographed edition or the waxed bronze bust. It is not only the idea which should hold all the pleasure, but the poet's pencil marks on paper, which we treasure above the memorized poem. And so I fan my flushed face, signaling the fast-talking auctioneer who has traced the provenance and picks up the pace, multiplying offers. And who now does my father's bidding? Heaven's coffers, perhaps, are for the destitute, but why did he have to die to escape the lousy, crime-ridden, never-to-be-gentrified neighborhood of both our births? The cost of living, he would argue, is not the worth of being alive. But still, he checked each lottery ticket which littered the empty lot next door, praised their silver latex glitter, praying to the beautiful unscratched like little gods. Money talks, he taught me, but nobody beats the odds. Hmm. Wow. Uh, so that's from my book, More Money Than mm -hmm. God. And, um, and how totally poignant, nobody beats the odds, and he certainly didn't. Uh, you know, we have to change the odds, right? <laughs> we have to move things mm -hmm. uh, uh, to a different angle. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought a very short poem from one of my children's books, too. Let's hear it. Um, and this is from a book called S is for C Glass, mm -hmm. which I think you have right it's over there. One. We're coming into this spring and summer. Yes. Uh, and I'm pleased I have a little uh, gingerbread cottage in Oak Bluffs on oh, Martha's sweet. Vineyard um, where I got to sit on the porch and write uh, this uh, book. It's an alphabet book for young kids going to the beach. And, Very sweet. Uh, again, a little different than most of my work, but it, I was commissioned to write it. I was mm -hmm. happy to do so. And actually, if you want to open it to T, uh, <laughs> we'll do that. T is for Tide. Okay. And while you're doing it, oh, oh wow, right, that's right good. Right there. This is just like the, the way things happen in a yeah, library, nice. okay. given that you're getting this award. Each day the tide's high, and each day the tide's low. The world's full of mysteries we'll never know. The moon orbits Earth and the tides are affected. No matter its form, all matter's connected. As sure as it ebbs, the tide also rises. And each day the world is full of surprises. Mm, very good. So that's a beach book for some young very, kids. And you're right, very upbeat, happy book. Very nice. And notice the the white kid and the black kid yeah, playing well, together. <laughs> well, I don't do the illustrations, but they're wonderful <laughs> illustrations. So um, we have some time left. I want to uh, I want to talk a little bit. You're getting this award. 
the SAMEs are April 25th. Yes. And please come, everybody uh, come. Yeah, please come. Support the Jones Library. Exactly. Um, That's what we're here to say. And I know that they say. are actually auctioning me off. Uh huh. Um, wow. To come to your book group to talk about children's books or adult books. And um, nice. as part of that, uh, we're also giving a original limited edition uh, um, Giclée print from one of my children's books called Bussing Brewster. I wow. don't, didn't bring it here, I didn't yeah. think to. Um, and oh, uh, it's about a, uh, a black child bus to an all-white school. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also get a wood engraving by Barry Mosier. Mm. So uh, come, bid, you can bid online. The Jones <laughs> Library appreciates your support. It's a yeah. wonderful library. I stop in almost every day mm -hmm. for something or other. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Bruce it's Watson, a neighborhood treasure. The other uh, recipient this year is uh, also a frequent, he does a lot of his writing there at the mm -hmm. library. So that's very sweet. And your relationship to the Eric Carl Museum is also connected because the Eric Carl Museum is also a recipient. They're getting the institution award. Institutional. And uh, yeah. the Eric Carl Museum, uh, you know, if so talk viewers a little don't know, about that. Yeah. Uh, I own and started R. Michelson Galleries mm -hmm. in Northampton. We had a branch in Amherst as well. I remember I'm, very well. I'm getting a little old and tired of running back and forth. So when did the Northampton Gallery open? Um, in '79. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've been here a long time. And then the Amherst one was from when to well, when? Well, actually, let's see. Uh, one of my dates. I think maybe I maybe Amherst opened in '79 and Northampton in '80 or '81. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, uh, I. Um, like Amherst, Northampton, we just had a larger space. Sure, beautiful um, space. It's, uh, come Everyone visit, should go over know, there, yeah. Yeah, uh, we have three floors, 60 foot high ceilings, it's gorgeous. Um, and uh, represent a lot of wonderful nationally and internationally known artists, mm -hmm. um, both fine artists. Uh, Leonard Baskin was somebody mm -hmm. who was very important to the gallery. Uh, Barry Mosier, a dear mm -hmm. friend, was the first artist we ever took on. Uh, the photographer, uh, Leonard Nimoy, who mm -hmm. many of you know, my dearest friend, uh, also wrote a children's book about Leonard called Fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, The Life of Leonard Nimoy. Uh, the other person who is probably most important in my Jewish education, uh, Leonard came from a Yiddish-speaking home mm. uh, and lived long and prosper. His hand signal, of course, is an ancient Hebraic prayer. Oh, funny. Uh, I but, didn't know that. Uh, well, yeah. you have to read the book. It talks about yeah. it. Yeah, wow. Um, but I also represent probably uh, the, the major gallery in the country representing original children's book art. Uh, and handle the original work of numerous children's book illustrators around the country. Uh, we often work very closely with the Eric Carle Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, if an artist comes into uh, the area, we'll do a show at the same time. Uh, it helps everyone mm -hmm. uh, to get a broader range of the work. Sure. I think their first exhibit was Maurice Sendak, uh -huh. uh, who blurbed one of my books and uh, was somebody who we represented. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jules Pfeiffer, who we worked sure. together with, Kadir Nelson, many, many people. And we continue that relationship. It's a very wonderful relationship yeah. um, and has really helped make the Pioneer Valley, really the center of children's That's book fantastic. illustration in the country. It's amazing yeah, yeah. how many people uh, live here, how many mm. of our wonderful artists. I'll start mentioning them, but then I'll leave somebody out. I know. Uh, but, There's uh, always that. But go to the website, com. You'll see uh, we just had a Mo Willems exhibit uh, for people who know Elephant and Piggy and Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Mm. Um, we'll have our 30th annual illustration exhibit this November. Okay. And uh, the authors and illustrators to. from all over the country come in. Wow. It's just wonderful. Do you do any international work? Um, we, well, we um, curate a lot of exhibits around the world. Uh huh, I uh, see. You know, we. Uh, um, we just, I was just uh, with my wife in South Korea for mm. a show we did in some museums there. Uh, they actually have a wonderful uh, collector base of American mm. children's books because that's how they learn sure. to speak English. Sure. Uh, and yes, I've been fortunate to travel all over the world, mm. um, both with my own work and with the gallery. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. 
This is great. I'm so glad you came in. That's it. Did we go? We breezed through, huh? That was we, easy. We did, wow. We did a lot. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to your talk at the Sammy's. Your Thank little... you. It'll, and be, Barry it'll be short and sweet. My dear friend Barry He's Mosier is going to introduce you. me. Yeah, uh, that's for great. people who don't know Barry's work, you should. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like um, myself, he does uh, work for adults and work for children. Yeah. He's run the gamut. His Penny Royal Caxton Bible, mm -hmm. uh, I think, is the uh, uh, which came out in 2000. It was the first fully illustrated uh, Bible hmm. in a century. Uh, wow. And he went from that to a picture book of three little pigs. Yeah. So again, quite ri quite a you range. You know, it's a wide range. Yeah, uh, and he's uh, he's a wonderful speaker. That's great. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, thank you. Thanks a lot, and thank you all for coming. I hope to, to see everyone see at the Sammys. Come today. join us. Well, when I was a little boy. Tell you about that.